Previously on Sailing Melody. We are Andy, Melissa, Jack and Ollie. Hi. Four years ago we bought a tiny boat which turned into a huge dream to give up land life, move onto a sailing yacht and sail full time. And maybe one day to sail all the way around the world. So with a tiny budget we got a bigger boat and then an even bigger boat which we spent three years rebuilding for the three of us. But then Ollie came along so we needed an even bigger boat. And for the past year and a half we've been working on Ocean Melody. And we've now achieved our dream of living aboard and have set off on our very, very slow adventure. Last week on our second day out we ran out of fuel here's why and here's what we did about it. Welcome to Diganwi. We got here last night, uh, well actually we got here yesterday lunchtime and uh, I spent yesterday afternoon doing pretty much nothing because I was knackered. And you'll have noticed that on the way in yesterday we had engine fuel problems which is a really uh, rookie mistake. I had this fantastic long checklist of stuff that I'd checked before I went and despite that stuff came up that I hadn't anticipated and that's the whole point of a um, shakedown sale isn't it? Uh, some people were saying well why have you gone to the gunway why didn't you go straight south and you know head straight off well you know we're knocking around this area just to make sure that on little short hops like that we try to find anything that could potentially go wrong on a more critical passage. Let me show you what the problem was with the fuel system. Regular viewers of the channel will know that under the companionway here, under the floor, there's a big uh, diesel tank in the keel, which has got issues and we're not using that. The, the engine runs on a day tank, which is in the crawl through. This is our day tank, which the engine runs off. And what happened was this. Before we left, I changed the diesel filter on the engine. I filled up the day tank with fresh diesel and uh, we've got spare jerry cans. So we got loads of diesel and a new filter. And I was thinking, sweet, that's nice. We motored getting from Carnarvon to Bumaris, which was fine. And then the next morning when Andy and I set out, I checked the diesel and we got two thirds of a tank left. I was thinking, well, two thirds of a tank when we motored for a good while yesterday uh, is more than enough to get us to Conway. We left Bumaris, we left uh, the Gazelle, uh, at, I don't know, half past six in the morning or whenever it was, and we were motoring against the tide. And that's where I made my mistake. I hadn't calculated in my head the fact that we would use a lot more fuel motoring against the tide to get out from the gazelle up to puffin island so by the time we rounded puffin island we'd used a lot more fuel and it just didn't it just didn't occur to me that we should uh i just don't know why it just didn't occur to me it wasn't a big problem because we were out far enough away from land that we weren't getting blown onto a lee shore so we just hoisted the sail and sailed on and d d solved the problem but when we ran out of fuel there was a little bit of just crap and sediment in the bottom of this day tank because one of the things i didn't do was take that tank out and give it a really really good clean you know i've been working so hard i was bound to miss something wasn't i I don't, I'm not beating myself up about that. It's just one of those things. Um, so it sucked up a little bit of crap from the bottom of the diesel tank. It clogged the first filter. There are two filters uh, on the engine. So it clogged the first one. So what Andy did while I was sailing, which is an amazing piece of Heath Robinson genius, was this. He's running the entire engine off a jerry can. So he's taken uh, the main pipe off the lift pump put it straight into a jerry can and then taken the spill back into the top of the pipe so we've into the top of the tank so we've bypassed this primary diesel filter completely because that one's blocked and at the minute the engine is just running from a pipe shoved in the top of a jerry can straight into the lift pump through that filter so there is still a filter so we're not going to block the injectors um, and then the spill back from the tank is coming from here into the top of this jerry can what i need to do now is put all that back as it was so that i don't forget which pipe goes where then i'll go through the system i'm going to remove that tank completely and either replace it or clean it um decisions to be made about that so because ollie and melissa and jack are moving aboard tomorrow i've got to get the boat ready for that um so i'm juggling now between making the boat into a nice safe family place for the family to be particularly the baby uh, but also carrying on with these jobs both of which are really big priorities so obviously the boat's got to be safe for ollie but obviously i've got to carry on doing jobs to keep the boat working and keep it moving and make sure the engine works because you know for whatever reason we need to crank up the engine and go it's got to be working 
working, but not at the expense of the safety of my child. So this is now going to be our boat life, isn't it? Is keeping the boat running and making it into a safe family space. <laughs> Right, this is all back together. The next thing that I've got to do is go outside and put the sail bags on because, as I say, I was just exhausted yesterday and I just didn't do it. So, and now it's pouring with rain, which is what, another reason why uh, some people were saying, well, why did you leave on that day or this day? It's all weather dependent with sailing, isn't it? And we've got a good forecast for Monday and Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. So, uh, and I could see on the weather forecasting that we would do some pretty crappy weather today. And it wouldn't have been impossible to sail today, but it would have been unpleasant. So I'm glad we did it when we did it. Uh, the downside is that I've now got to go outside and uh, put the sail bags on and just do a deck walk and check the boat's okay. Along the bottom of this sail bag are a load of poppers and they're all broken, well, a few of them work. So I'm actually making the rudimentary sail ties just come off the bag so I'm not doing a fix on this because Melissa is in the middle of making sat packs for us right now. So there's no point in me wasting time. I'm just going to tie it up so it's secure. The next thing I want to sort of turn my attention to is the diesel tank issue. This is the day tank that the engine actually runs off. It's too small. We got all the way back from Dartmouth just using this last year, but it's a, it's, it's a bit silly. It's in a bit of a silly place. The filler neck is under here, so you have to use an electric transfer pump to fill it up, which is really daft. And uh, you just have to be aware of how much fuel you're using. So I need to um, sort this out. I want to empty the tank, give it a clean, change that filter uh, and just make sure that this is back up and running uh, to go along with that i've then got an upgrade the upgrade is going to be a larger day tank here is our upgraded diesel day tank it's 62 liters um it needs a good clean but it's it's for petrol and diesel um so that's going to be a huge upgrade the one that we've got is 20 liters so this is three times the size and it will fit just perfectly under our chart table you know we know we know that we can run the boat on that small day tank we did it all of last year it was fine it was just a little bit of a pain in the bum first thing i've got to do is empty the day tank because we filled it up and then realised that one of the diesel filters was blocked. So I've got to empty it all into a jerry can and I'm going to actually take it out, thoroughly clean it uh, and then put it all back. OK, cool. So the diesel tank's out. I can now give that a clean. I've just made a cup of tea, so I'm going to go and have a brew. But uh, I just want to try and get this filter off. Pretty sure I'm going to need a special tool to get this off. Annoyingly, I ha can't find my filter removal tool if you know what one is then you know what one is but they're basically like a bike chain with a handle or sometimes they're a webbing strap with a handle um i've just spent an hour looking for it and i know i've got one and it's just oh, so irritating because i've put it down somewhere and can't find it but i have uh found another way of doing it the way i'm doing it is this uh with a g-clamp and i've just got enough purchase on to to be able to undo the filter in fact that's doing it up isn't it that's the wrong way and just as i'm about to change this diesel filter look who's turned up oh. what's this print that princess isn't yours is it no tender no, I, I was. <laughs> what's Gemma doing on somebody else's princess then oh, if i'm stealing the fuel or something Ste like yeah 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 don't sell it though so. <laughs> no, no. Well, no, there's there's abba you can see abba just, just but, there. butari yeah, yeah with, the, with the blue top on it yes very nice. Oh. We'll have to come over. What are you up to today? Sorting out um, diesel issues. Okay. We've got been problems. there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> got problems with our diesel tank, so I'm just I'm changing filters at the minute. I think every boat, a diesel boat, has got a problem with the tanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always, always. It's not man managing the problem, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Get it all out. Start again. Yeah. You know what, Gem? Yeah, not bad, you. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? <laughs> Not seen you since the wedding. I know. Well, that was very nice. So while Melissa and Ollie and Jack go off for a walk, 
Gemma and Simon from Ship Happens are going out to do a little bit of fishing. Yeah. See you later. The water. Hey. Looks nice. She's all, she's all right and she's a pretty boat. Yeah. Back to diesel filters. This little um, plug at the bottom just drains the uh, the filter down. And the advantage of emptying it first is that when I take the case off, take the filter off, if I have to tip it to get the filter out, it's not gonna suddenly spill loads of diesel everywhere. There we go. This type of fuel filter doesn't have the removable cartridge, but it does have the water separator, and so you can get the water out the bottom. I'm gonna have to do some uh, research to find out exactly which one this is. Right, I think we've got progress. This is proper proper boat work on a YouTube channel stuff. I've just spoken to Ian from SV Blown Away, who's my kind of go-to for a lot of stuff, and I've spoken to Andy. I think I'm just gonna buy a Raycor setup, and I want to get the twin filter work version, but they're mega bucks, and I can't afford that at the minute, and we need to be able to move the boat. So for now, I just need any filter that's got the same thread and the same O-ring, even if it doesn't have the water trap, it'll get us up and running, won't it? And I've run around several places and there's a place called Branbury in Ruthin. So I'm gonna take a drive over there and see if they've got one of these and they can match it up. Something that I can screw on, which will get us up and running. Jack's coming with me and we're also taking these uh, fittings for our new upgrade tank, because I'm missing a couple of bits for that. So here we are, we've just come over to Branbury uh, Branbury Components, and they've managed to find us an identical filter. Look at that. Uh, they didn't even have the serial number. We've just managed to match it up using the thread testers, and it, sh it looks like it's absolutely identical. I'm going to take it back to the boat, try it, and if it doesn't work, I can bring it back tomorrow and swap it, which is really, really good. Right, great. So there's our new filter. There's our old filter. They were really, really helpful there, and... Um, I think they've found me the exact right one. Yeah, that's that's a perfect fit. I, I think what I'm gonna do though, because the housing is looking a bit ropey, I think I'm just gonna take the housing off and uh, give it a bit of a clean up. So I've removed this old fuel transfer pump. I'm gonna look at either replacing or refurbishing that. This is the housing that the filter clamps on. And can you see the inlet is actually blocked with gunge. So just changing the filter wouldn't have actually helped. This here is a nicely cleaned up fuel filter um, fitting, the bulkhead fitting. The fuel pump, the Jabsco pump, I've taken the sticker off so I can search it. They're about 350 pounds. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try and rebuild it. It's in a very sorry state though, isn't it? You just saw me taking it apart and it looks, looks pretty terminal. I think it's probably terminal, but we'll find out. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna soak all the, I've got it all in bits. I'm gonna soak it all in some diesel overnight. Maybe I can rebuild it. I've rebuilt worse, but that there is ready to go back on. And this is the filter that it will go on to. Right, so I've got myself together a little kit of stuff. Brand spanking new fuel hose. For the pipe, I've got brand new clips. Clippy clips. Now, these are not Jubilee clips. They're proper hose clips. With Jubilee clips, what tends to happen is as you tighten them up, they uh, they turn into ellipse and they crush the pipe in a funny way. These uh, remain round as you tighten them up. I've got a fantastic new filter. I've cleaned up the housing for it. I've, uh, you know, that's all reconditioned and ready to go back on. So I can mount that back on the bulkhead. And I've got a brand new filter to go on the engine itself. And I've also got this tank. I've bought this right angle adapter because the new, the tank is now going under here, under the chart table. I'm gonna try to plumb this into the deck fitting because We've still got issues with our keel tank and it may be some time before that is properly fully recommissioned um, and it will be much easier to fill 
the diesel tank from the deck. What I was talking about earlier in terms of getting fuel into the tank, there's a deck fitting on deck up there and it comes down through the deck head here uh, and the original pipe to take fuel to the diesel tank is this old copper pipe. I think I'm just going to cut that out. I've drilled a new hole here and I'm going to take the pipe for the diesel from this down through that hole. So now the fuel pipe comes down through the deck here, down through the back of the chart table there, and comes out there. I don't know if you can see, and I've got this filler pipe here that I can install into the top of the tank. I also managed to slice a big chunk out the end of my thumb. I've got it all dressed up and I'll uh, wash my hands later and give it a good clean. I have washed it and put some put so, sort of rudimentary dressing on it, uh, but it's still bleeding. I've got some gloves on now as well, because with a cut on my thumb, I probably ought to protect that a little bit. And um, it's stinging like you wouldn't believe. So uh, I really don't want to get diesel in it. So that is the main fuel feed, and that goes on the lift pump down here. I don't like the way that these fuel pipes are run at all. And I've already got in my head ideas for what I want to do to improve on that, but we've got to leave Deganwe in about four days. So I'm not going to start a major overhaul of the fuel system. I'm just going to earmark it for a future job. While I'm at this stage, I'm also going to change the fuel filter uh, on the engine itself. Uh, if you remember earlier on in the job, I didn't have a fuel filter tool and I bought one. One thing I do like about the way that this was set up is they had this inline ball valve. It's looking a bit worse for wear, but it still works. Um, I'll swap it at some point, but obviously I can't swap it today because I haven't just I can't just magic one out of thin air. So I'll put that one back on for now. And uh, it's basically an emergency fuel cutoff, so it goes in the main fuel supply to the engine. This one here is the pickup. just um, cable tying the pipes together. So these wires here are taking power to our bilge pump switches. These pipes are the fuel. Those four, I have no clue what they do. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know what they do. And I'm reluctant to just cut them now because I could end up, you know, with a, a can of worms. Uh, that one I know what it does. These two are AC for the Victron Multi Plus 2, so they're fine. Um, so I'm gradually getting to the point, as you notice, where I'm ripping out all the old wires. But I'm doing it little bit by little bit because I'm frightened of cutting off power to something really critical. Uh, we're still having issues with our autopilot, but at least it's kind of working at the moment. Not as well as I'd like it to. Um, but that is uh, something that we're working on. And the other thing that you will notice is here, look, is a huge tank. This is another tank here, and it extends all the way to the aft end of the engine bay. 
And there's another one under the galley that extends all the way to the aft end of the cockpit locker. And these are massive. So I wonder if in the original incarnation of this boat, the water tanks were here and not in the saloon at all. Um, we're sort of it, on the planet it says, you know, two tanks, one on the port, one on the starboard, but it doesn't say whether they're in the saloon or these two positions. Who knows? Uh, but it would be great to have all four going, wouldn't it? Because then we've got, you know, let's say for argument's sake, these are 300 litres each. We'd have 1200 litres of, of water. And even if they're 200 litres each, you know, we'd have 800 litres of water, which is fantastic. Uh, all in good time. We've now got fuel tank in and we've got pipe bringing fuel to tank. Uh, pipe taking fuel to engine, pipe bringing spill back unburnt fuel back from engine, emergency fuel shut off valve under the uh, easy access panel there. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that's uh, that's progress. I'm still waiting for that. Uh, my brother's just texted me to say that something's arrived at my mum's house uh, and it looks like it's that fitting. And I still, I'm going to need to get the... Um, the uh, level sensor, sender unit, aren't I? And I need to just build a little shelfy, shelfy thing under this end because of the way the hole tapers. That end is fine, but that end just needs supporting up. Right, I've got a wooden framework underneath the tank now. I didn't film that bit. It's just like, well, wasn't that interesting to film. When I get to a nice anchorage somewhere and I'm not, you know, three days to go before we depart from here and go on to our next port. I'll do a really nice job of this, but I'll be able to use that as a template. So I've knocked it together. It's dead strong. It's made out of two by two tantalized uh, timber. So it'll hold the tank up, no problem at all. The tank cannot move. It's inside this cupboard and I've recessed it into the shelf. Again, I'll do a, a pretty job of this later. As long as it's strong and functional, that's all that matters for now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to check the Jubilee clips, the pipe clips on the filler, and I'm going to start filling up this new diesel tank, which is very exciting from the outside. Uh, and I'm going to just do a little bit and then come in and see if it's actually weeping. It shouldn't do because it's not under pressure, isn't it? It's only pouring down a tube. I'm going to stop there and see if it's weeping out around any of those connections going to the diesel tank. That's completely dry. And under here, lovely, amazing. Right, I'm going to fill the rest. I'll put that 20 litres in, that's a 20 litre um, container. So I'll stick that in and then we might be ready to start priming the injectors and stuff. So this thing here is called a lift pump and you do this with your finger and, and pump it through and hopefully what it does is it pulls fuel through. It's got to fill all of that first and then it's got to fill all of this one. So there's a quite a lot of priming to do before we actually start to see fuel. What I've done, I've taken the pipe coming out of the lift pump into the secondary filter off, put some kitchen roll under that, and I'm pumping the lift pump until at least I know I've got fuel up this far. But I can actually hear the fuel going into this pump here. I don't know if you can hear it. it just tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Listen. So it's gradually filling up this uh, this filter. So just to demonstrate, obviously when you stop pumping, yeah, see there's, there's, there's crap in there and that must be in this piece of pipe. So I'm gonna change this piece of pipe. Oh. Hopefully this should be clean now. There might be a few little specks 
that have from the old pipe that have gone back into the lift pump. I mean, it might be that I need to change the diaphragm in the lift pump, but there we go. See, that's now clear diesel coming out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's what I wanted. Right, so you can go on there. And then the next thing that we do is take this pipe off because this takes the fuel from this filter into the fuel rail. And by taking this pipe off and replacing it, we can tell A, if this pipe is degraded as well. And we can also pump it through and see if this filter is you know when it's full i would like to remind you as always that this is not a how-to channel it's a what happened channel i'm not a mechanic i'm not a marine diesel engineer or anything of the sort i'm just doing what i know and calling somebody who's an actual expert when i get stuck you know hopefully it's helpful to somebody but don't consider it a tutorial it's, or even a demonstration it's just uh, uh, this is what happened on our boat today So again, you can see here, I've pumped it through and now there's clear diesel coming out of this pipe, which is showing that this filter is now full. So what I've now got to do is connect that to the fuel rail and then we should be good to start taking it up to the injectors. That goes on the fuel rail, which is there because this uh, dressing on my thumb is pretty nasty now. I've taken a proper chunk out of it as well. As I said, I'm not an engineer and I can't seem to get the fuel to get up to the fuel rail uh, to get up to the, the injectors with the lift pump. So maybe what I've got to do now is turn the engine over on the key and crack off each injector one at a time. <laughs> I'm going to crack off one injector. Uh, that's number four. Let's do number one. Let's do number one. See what happens. Okay, well that seems to have fuel to it though. Let's do it back up. We'll do number two. No good, no bueno, as, Ga as Barry would say. I'm so happy I could jump, clap, clap, spin around. I'm so happy today. Jump, clap, spin. Stop, stop, hey. Right, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to bits. We've now got a tank three times the size of what we did. It was a tiny little 20 litre day tank. We've now got a 62 litre tank. It's got 40 litres in. I've just put both jerry cans in it. The engine now starts like that. How nice is that? 
runs smooth as a nut. I've cracked off all the injectors so there's no air in the system. Everything's running beautifully. All I've got to do now is tidy up because look at the state of the place. Um, yeah, Melissa's not going to be happy if she comes home. She will be happy because she knows I've been working. But she's on the way back now going via the supermarket. So I've got about an hour, I think, to get this back ship shape. Coming up. Melissa makes a huge upgrade to our sailbag system, I get the engine room insulated and looking presentable and we meet some not so scary pirates. Thanks so much for watching and thanks in particular to any of you who have supported us through donations via PayPal or Coffee or Patreon. We don't ever ask anyone for donations but we do get people asking how they can give a little something so here's how. If you want to make a one-time donation you can use coffee.com forward slash sailing melody or paypal.me forward slash sailing melody or if you'd like to become a patron and have the episodes early and access to our live updates and direct messaging with us then head over to patreon.com forward slash sailing melody and become a patron for the price of a cup of coffee per month we release quite a lot of content videos pictures and posts on patreon which are exclusive there and only available to those supporters all the links are of course in the description thanks guys see you next time